Right, so this video is all about uh, how the shape of river valleys change downstream um, as the river flows from its source area, that's where it starts to the to the mouth. And here you can see it's all the drainage basins of the United Kingdom and uh, the British Isles. Um, and I just sort of outlined a little bit there. You can see the outline edge there. Um, all of that covers the entire watershed, the outside edge of the River Thames uh, basin. We could have done the same here. We're on this purple feature, that's the the River Ouse and all of its tributaries uh, that, that ends up flowing through York and out into the uh, out into the Humber. Um, so all of those are, are river valleys, and Britain is a is a country with many many rivers, which is why we suffer some some floods sometimes. Um, so your drainage basin, that's the area of land um, drained by a river and all of its all of its tributaries. Um, the watershed is the edge, the edge area there that you can see. Um, in which all the all the water is collected. We have the valley sides up there, um, and then we have these small rivers that feed into the main river. Okay, the small rivers are called tributaries because they contribute water to the main stream, and those tributaries meet at confluences. So um, uh, the confluence is a point where two rivers meet. And then don't forget that there's a lot of water under the under the ground. So when it rains on the ground, uh, some will flow over the surface, but some soak straight through the soil down into the rock. Uh, and deep under the ground, um, we've got saturated rock. And the the upper layer of that is called the the water table. Okay. The last thing to mention there, the main input to the system is precipitation, uh, and that can vary uh, in quantity, and it can also vary in type because sometimes we get snow, which rests on our uplands. As we move downstream along a river, if we started up in the mountain up here and worked our way all the way down, all the way down that profile there until we reached the sea and followed the journey of a river, um, we would be following the long profile of of the river. OK, so the long profile, it's just the change in gradient um, as we move along the river. It starts off really steep and then gets uh, gradually more and more gentle until we reach the sea. OK, so it generally tends to have a, a concave profile. The upper valley is where we find our V-shape valleys. OK, um, and the reason for that is that the dominant process here is vertical erosion. Um, the river uses a lot of its energy to cut down into the into the riverbed and it keeps the valley sides really steep. Um, you will get some traction. That's the rolling of boulders along the bed and saltation at high flow. And the load size will be angular in the middle reaches that will start to level out so the river will start eroding laterally from side to side and that um, that widens the river valley widens the channel um, and vertical erosion decreases in importance we'll probably have more suspension as the main transportation type rather than um, traction with that larger angular material and then when we get downstream we'll get really flat, wide valleys with a really wide river. OK, so once we get down into the lower reaches of the river, um, deposition, deposition will probably be more important than, than erosion um, and a lot of fine material will be deposited. So uh, just sort of knock together some photographs. So you can see typical V-shaped valley profile there, narrow, shallow river, fast running, um, cutting down into the bed in the middle reaches. More gentle valley sides, a big wide flat floodplain. You'd expect to see meanders, um, uh, the odd standing water where the river, uh, where the river's valley is really flat in the middle, and then uh, this photograph here of Tees side where the river Tees enters the the sea, very very flat area on that on that floodplain, and deposition is the main process. Okay, so your main processes on rivers. Uh, this one's traction. Okay, heavy. Heavy rocks and boulders are rolled along the riverbed, um, and that happens mainly in times of flood. Saltation is a bouncing motion of the sediments. You can see that sediment bounce across the, the bed for smaller sediment. Suspensions where tiny fragments or very small particles of sand and clay are suspended in the water. Solution, that's where material is dissolved into the waters. That occurs where we have acidic river water and, and rocks like limestone that are susceptible to being dissolved and obviously uh, this sort of summarizes it obelix there um, as as we go as the flow um, decreases in um, in speed um, we'll go from traction through to solution 
okay in terms of your river erosion processes if particles are carried and clashed together that there we'd call attrition if a particle's carried and bashes into the bed that has a sandpaper type action which abrades the river and the shear action of the water flowing over the bed has a smoothing impact and that we call hydraulic action okay so that's what smooths out stones within the the river we do get deposition in rivers as well here you can see a where a river's vertically eroded and exposed some previously deposited sediments so you can see the layers in the in the sediment those have been laid down in the past by river flooding and we can see other sediments here uh, at the base of the river wherever the river slows down and loses energy we'll get deposits of sediment okay this is a satellite image from nasa and you can see um, rivers coming off major glaciers the main thing i put this on for was just to show you how much sediment actually washes out from rivers uh, and becomes an input into the sea so in terms of your tasks on this lesson there's a video here for you to take notes okay so you'll go to that uh, website with youtube and take a look at how the river conway changes from source to mouth i've popped some uh, notes into cool geography in the booklet um, and read as far as the landform section you should probably take a copy of the long profile of a river diagram with the cross profiles on it okay and you can describe and explain the changes taking place there when you're watching that video on youtube it might be an idea to draw out a table like this one and try and fill it out um, as the video plays um, and you could also draw a little mind map um, with definitions at the end of each branch for how all of these processes actually work okay um, you could put little diagrams on as well mind maps need need diagrams really so there's one for for traction okay um, so a little bit of a dad joke just to finish um, i love watching rivers on the internet earlier on i was watching a live stream enjoy your learning